you have your cameras. Yes, you do. <laughs> this is the first time we've shared the stage. It is. Right? It is. So what should we do? Questions or answers? Which would you like? Both. Do you like little, I always have a little bit of both. Sure. Um, Yesterday we uh, spoke a little bit uh, about Markham in your case, and we spoke about American Werewolf in London. American Werewolf. Um, what do you personally think? Why why are those movies, and in your case the other Romero movies too, uh, so-called cult movies? And uh, why did people after all those years still like those movies? What do you personally think? What I personally think is that they're well-made films. And, um, and, and they're, in, they're intelligent films, and they're smart films, and they're well done. And um, anything that's well done generally stands the test of time. And uh, that's, that's my point of view, so. Yeah, I would definitely agree with John. Uh, American Werewolf is a good story. You know, it's a classic story of uh, you know, a, a guy with a, with a fatal flaw. He's going to turn it into a werewolf, but... It's basically a good story, and there's a romance involved, so I think a uh, story is what really holds up. Yeah, I agree, totally. Hi. Yeah, question uh, to you, David. Um, did you watch the remastered version of American Travelers? Because they did, uh, they did remaster it two years ago, and John Landis was the premiere in London. Did you watch it? The remastered version of the Is this the the uh, Blu-ray? Yeah. Um, I've yes, of course I've seen it. Um, and uh, I guess what he did, he, he got together with the orchestra, I and mean, they they added some particular sound effects. Um, there's nothing really new, you know, that they could change from the actual locked film, per se. But uh, I've seen it in many languages as well as. You know, in, in those different versions, so uh, there were no surprises for me. A question for you both. Have you ever um, done a scene or scenes in a movie that later have been cut out and uh, that you would like uh, personally have to see in the movie or in the production? Well, for me, there was a uh, Martin, uh, the film, the first film I did with George Romero, um, was, plays right now at about 90 minutes, but there was an original three and a half hour version of the film that has been lost, um, and nobody seems to know where that uh, particular version landed. Now George shoots a lot of film when he um, when he works, and he had about four hours that he cut down to three and a half. Uh, unfortunately, the, that version is long gone, so there was a good two hours uh, cut from the version that is now playing uh, from Martin. And, uh, I think that's a sad state of affairs. I wish we had the original print. Yes, certainly from in, in American Werewolf, Griffin and I became very comfortable in the pub scene when we first walked in. So we added lots of fun stuff, which we thought was particularly funny, and uh, we thought it would be, you know, entertaining for all. Uh, it turns out John didn't think it was very funny, and he's a director, so that scene is cut down considerably to, uh, you know, what was originally written in the script. Which, you know, goes to say, sometimes you get an opportunity to, and there are some in improvisational things that we do in the film. You know, when we're out on the moors and we're singing, that wasn't necessarily in the script. You know, we're, hey, it's a cold and a wet out here. And, you know, lines we could throw in and actually stay. But um, more often than not, it's best to stay with the script. Hey, this we should be posing. Oh, well, this is my question for John. Um, in Day of the Dead, uh, there was a, a lot of good dialogue for you, I thought, in that movie. And I particularly like the one where you and Sarah are looking through the glass of Bub about uh, zombies being your friend and one getting in a cab down New York and you want to be his friend. What's your memory of making um, Day of the Dead and what was your favourite line from the movie for you? Well, the, here's the honest truth, is that I seldom remember lines from films that I've been involved in. 
Um, you guys know the, the films actually probably better than I do. Um, uh, but I can tell you that working with Lori Cardill uh, was a true, true, true pleasure. And um, she and I had uh, a great rapport. I knew Lori from, we're both from the same hometown, and um, uh, I knew her father, who uh, in Pittsburgh is a broadcast person, and he worked on the first, on Night of the Living Dead with uh, George. And, um, but Lori and I, uh, we did a little improvisation uh, during that particular scene, which was a lot of fun. And, um, but don't ask me to remember lines. I remember so seldom uh, the lines that I've been given from the text. Um, I barely remember, well, I, re I barely remember my name most mornings. So, um, trying to trying to go back and, and, and fetch lines from the past, it's hard for me to hard for me to do. But I've had a great I had a great time working in in Day of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Creep Show, Night Riders, Martin. I mean, all of my all of my work with Romero has been memorable and pleasurable. Uh, you mentioned uh, Creep Show. Um, he did wrote something on it and he acted in it too. Um, Romero said in an interview that he uh, still wasn't uh, satisfied with the actual work. I mean, I, he I heard that. Um, I don't know exactly how to respond to Mr. King's dissatisfaction. Um, I thought it was tremendous. I thought uh, I thought the storylines in all five of the uh, segments were were wonderful, and I thought he did a great job with the writing. I can tell you this, that in my personal opinion, I think George works best when he is, um, when he is also the writer. Um, uh, it would have been maybe a little better if the two of them had a greater opportunity to collaborate, I think, on some of the writing. Um, but um, my personal working with, I, I didn't have an opportunity to work with uh, Mr. King, but I did experience him on set, and he was a delightful guy, and he was happy to be there. And uh, I never got any sense of dissatisfaction from him whatsoever. In fact, I thought he was a lot of fun. Questions for John? You spoke yesterday about your experience, the experience of shooting day after day in the mine. A lot of people were ill. What was your general experience? My personal experience, I had, um, I was lucky because I only had a couple of weeks on the, on the production. Um, but a lot of people spent like three months down there, and especially the, the crew and some of the um, uh, principal uh, actors uh, really had respiratory problems because it was very cold and damp. There was like a six acre lake that was in the mine at that time, which has now been uh, cleaned up and um, they've taken all of that away and it's uh, very nice and it's a nice storage space now. But um, and then it was it was rather arduous for the um, both the cast and the crew, especially those folks that had to spend three months down in that mine. So it was uh, yeah it was uh, it was a difficult it was a difficult situation. A lot of them had chest problems and respiratory problems. So I have a question for you both. Uh, I know it's hard for an actor to remember scenes and lines, but uh, of all the productions you both did, uh, what is your favorite scene and why? Favorite scene and why? Well, I, I can tell you my least favorite. I don't know if I have a favorite scene, but you know, um, during the transformation scene in in American world, particularly, is it's a, there's a big payoff, of course, because that's that's what the film's about: is what is he going to change? But the, the actual doing of it uh, was um, a little uh, arduous, as to use John's word. Six days of uh, ten hours a day in the makeup chair, um, doing uh, you know, waiting for Rick Baker to finally say he's ready, and and that was uh, very hard for for Rick. He, would, he was never completely satisfied. You know, he's one of those artists 
that he can make you up and he's still touching you up all the way out the door to the set and you know and then between takes come over more pains you finally just want to say you know enough enough already but it's never the case with him. so that's was a scene that I couldn't wait to get done yeah for me I'll take David's lead and 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 uh, mention my least favorite as well, which is uh, uh, I'm sure many of you have seen Creep Show in the first segment, Father's Day, and I too am under a lot of makeup in that uh, in that particular role. And uh, there was a point, there is a point in the film at which we see I call the character Dead Nate, so that we see Nathan um, with. Um, Called uh, box. What? Um, what's the word for little worms? What maggots? Thank you so much. There is a scene where Dead Nate opens his mouth, and all of these maggots spew forth. Uh, it's not me. I, I chickened out, and um, actually one of the crew members, uh, a PA at the time, um, actually donned the headset and uh, was, and a, it was a female too, by the way, who was showed much more courage than I ever could and allowed herself to uh, be um, magnetized. <laughs> so that was my least favorite. My favorites, um, most of, most of the time, my favorites are anything that still stays in the film. <laughs> right. <laughs> I have a question for both of you. Um, what are your thoughts on the evolution of our horror genre, uh, genre in relation to the violence? Uh, looking back at the late 70s, mid 70s, and further back, you've got that psych psychological violence where you imagine and it's up to you really left up to your own imagination to, to visualize what's going on and the newer generation of horror films it's all there for you what are your thoughts on that well just you know sum it up briefly for me less is more you know i particularly you know in werewolf you, you don't really see the creature um i don't like to see you know i think it's much more uh of an impact to leave it up to your mind you know the psychological part or what you don't see can be a lot more horrific than actually laying it all out there for you. And that's, you know, just a general rule for me. It's, I don't want to necessarily see it all. Yeah, I have a tendency to agree with that. And um, less is more, I think. Uh, uh, I, had a gr I have a greater appreciation, I think, because when I was working with George, it was in the late 70s and, and early 80s, and uh, the psychological effect for me is far more um, uh, 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 striking and, and frightening, quite frank, um, than the graphic stuff. Um, although I've been involved with some of the graphic stuff as well. Um, but I think, you know, I, I kind of mentioned this yesterday during the Q&A as well, is that the, there's a, probably a place for everything in the marketplace. Uh, but when you talk about personal taste, um, I agree totally with David. The idea of less is more. It's more intriguing um, than... I'll go back to um, the work in Martin. Uh, Martin honestly has like 90 seconds of any kind of bloodletting in it whatsoever. And I think that is far more effective um, than some of the splatter stuff that you see today. For David, uh, uh, there's um, making off uh, that Paul Davis did uh, two years ago. Uh, where the moon show. Can you tell us anything about it? I think he tried to contact you. Yeah, I don't know if you've had a chance to see it. Um, but Paul Davis.